I'd like to uh, call the service committee meeting together at 6 o'clock p.m. Members present, Steve Young, Sierra and Sherry, myself as chairman, Brenton Potter is absent. Hey guys, can you quiet Brent, down please? Wait a minute. Hey, we're, we're uh, holding a meeting. At this time, I'd like to uh, have any public participation. Anybody have anything that they want to say? I got a couple questions. My name is Craig White, 1111 25 Hillcrest Drive. What is the city ordinances on these dumpsters in downtown Bucyrus and all around town that don't have safety guards, don't have any cones around them, or anything? And some of them have been parked there for two and a half months in parking spaces in downtown. Don't know. Okay. We'll check it out. Uh, I mean, I know the one that the uh, Crazy Fox got removed today which was actually impeding traffic because it was so huge that it was actually in the driving lane. But the one that's currently, the only one currently that I found downtown is the one that sits just near the square in front of Cash Land. What now, do you the, know what, what they the have, They are? have barricades up, Mr. Garrett. but there's no reflected, no lights, no cones, no nothing. And who's responsible? Someone would hit that. And what's the duration the are they line. in parking spaces? Or are they in? Oh, the they're street? in parking spaces. Oh, yeah, it takes up two. Two hours. Two hours. There you go. Two, two hour parking. So well, what, what is? Put one of those in a parking spot. You have to come up and get a permit from the zoning or the administration to impede a parking spot. Which all of those they come up and they apply and they get those. But I don't how long? Yeah, I don't know the duration. What's the duration of that one's been sitting there for two and a half months? Yeah. Okay, yeah. the one there in front of Surge. It's been there for no. two and a half months. Now, the one I know the one at the Crazy Fox was only there for yeah, a couple the weeks. One up by First Federal. And the one was up by First Federal, it was there for a good month. Yeah. It was. It's still there. Like, I think it's it still was there, there too, for a month. Yeah. And they're taking up parking spaces for people to do business in downtown. But why isn't there any cones or lights or something? I mean, the one currently has barricades around it, but. There's no cones, no nothing, and what's the duration for people, you know, for the permit? I mean, right. Dan saying two-hour parking, I agree with that. I mean, the I mean, they should, it should be a short-term thing because right. the other thing, too, it's a fire hazard, too. Well, if somebody goes by and decides, hey, I want to light a dumpster on fire in downtown Bucyrus right. because it's all wood. What? Wood, furniture, clothing, whatever they throw in those things, and they're not covered at night either. Great. So, okay, thank you. Do you know about that? Any, what's the ordinance on those, you know? Really, so typically, like permanent um, dumpsters are supposed to be behind fences. Um, I think last council, or maybe Dan brought that up, that we yeah. have a significant amount of dumpsters that are not technically um, behind gates yeah. or locked or whatever. Um, so that's the permanent, but these that he's talking about are temporary where they come in and they set them because they're working on construction on uh, the Crazy Fox where the uh, First Federal was fixing that yes. one building. Um, I know they come in and they apply for permission to stick it there, uh, but maybe that's something that I have to talk to the administration about tightening up the rules and saying, okay, you can have it, but it's got to be out of there every every five days or whatever it is. Or, or maybe the signage up that states this dumpster, dumpster permit Lasts until such and such date. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Something. Yeah. One biggest thing is I'm afraid someone's going to hit. Yeah. I get it. Okay. okay. Anybody else got anything they want to bring up? Bruce Kirk, 1100 Linden. Uh, I want to talk about uh, uh, the service uh, piece of legislation talking about. Uh, clean out valves and laterals. Um, so not to, we're, that, we're, we're, that we're, one is getting pulled. We're pulling that out tonight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I just wanted to. Yep. It's not ready. Okay. Nope. All right. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. There's just some, some stuff to look at. Okay. I uh, you got the minutes for the October 18th regular service meeting. I need a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Second. Ms. Sherrick approved. Made motion to approve. Steve Young second. Vote by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, we're pulling the next one out. 
Uh, open projects. Anybody got anything they want to talk about on open projects? Seeing none, any more from the public? Yeah. Ken Long, 625 South Spring Street. Mr. Spiegel, I was here last night, so I yes. don't know if I'm, if I'm yes. is it the right time? Yes. Okay, very yes. good. Okay. All right. So everybody saw my face last night. Everybody knows why I'm here. Um, I'm. If you don't have the discussion topics from last night, I can provide you another copy so we can keep moving on this. Okay. Got them. Everybody, everybody good? Okay. So we're down to the to uh, the second half of the page um, about water billing. Uh, I got a copy of the uh, the ordinance today. Um, it's uh, it's definitely not clear as far as uh, uh, what what I'm after as far as uh, uh, getting getting off the hook for this water. Uh, I, I understand it's a state it's a state issue. Um, there's legislation at the state for that right now, but in the meantime, um, it it may or it is a state law that the the city can put that on there. I don't agree with that, but that's the way the, the way law is written. But as far as the cost to get to that that, that amount that I owe, that there's there's got to be there's got to there's got to be some fix to this. That would come from I think. Please, I, Mr. Garrett would know more about what that fixed cost is. Garner. Garner, yeah. What did I say? Garrett. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, so I guess there's a couple of ways that you could approach this. And I know that the, in talking to the water department, their policy, and I don't know when this policy was created, but anybody that has over a $20 um, past due balance gets shut off. And I know what you're saying is, well, they came in and paid something and that allowed them to kick, it, kick the can another month. Um, I would have to talk to them about those specific accounts because I know that you've showed me stuff, but I would have to talk to um, the people in the utility department to figure out why that happened or what happened in those specific instances. But their policy is if anybody is less than $20 overdue, we're not going to shut them off for $20 or less because the re-hookup fee or the re-whatever fee is $45 or $75 for a complex. Um, so it's cost prohibitive at that point, and you can shake your head, but that's in the statute. Forty-five dollars to rehook oh, up. I said twenty-five. Forty-five. I'm sorry. Forty-five or seventy-five. Right. So their policy is we don't shut off for twenty dollars or under. Um, but the bigger issue, and the issue that I think most landlords are perturbed about, is that these tenants can come in and set up a water account, and then somehow the city puts it on the landowners if the tenants don't pay that, which like you said is allowed pursuant to state law. Um, so I guess the, if you could do two things. You could set up a policy that says on rental properties that you, there's, you, you have to pay in full or it gets shut off, which would protect you. Um, or um, every land, every water bill has to be in the landlord's name and then you're in control of it. If they don't pay you, you come in and you evict them because that's part of their rent. Uh, a lot of surrounding communities do that, and I, I don't know that you guys want that as landlords to be on the hook for those water bills. No, sir. Um, but that's, that's a fix that a lot of communities have come up with, um, saying if you're going to be on the hook, you should at least have the foresight and be involved from the beginning. Um, but I, I think at this point, the water department and the city is unlikely to change the, any policy, and that would be up to council, but to change their policy um, saying that we're not going to put that back on your taxes. Um, because at this point, that's what the state law authorizes, and that helps the uh, city, and uh, you know, it's a business expense for you guys. Yeah, but, and so, I know it's state law, but it's not a matter of helping the city. I don't work for the city. I'm, a, they're, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not an agent. You are benefiting from being able to rent your properties by city utilities. That would be the theory behind it. So you can't rent those properties without our water. You can't run your business without city water. So you have a direct benefit from being, being given city water in your, in your okay. 
on the flip side, if you owned a place in the country and you didn't have water, you'd have to dig a well, right? That would be your expense. When the well goes bad, you're going to have to fix it. Okay. Well, that, all, all this is great. We, we could spend a week and never, never get this resolved, okay, the way, the way we're, we're going about this right now. So I, just, just from a brevity point of view, it's exciting what, what, what Mr. Gurren is saying, but that's not, that's, not going to get, that's not going to get me to the promised land, okay? So I see, I'll, I'll present this right now, and then there'll be a lot of, a lot of hate of all this, but I'll, I'll still mention it. I think there's three solutions to this. Number one, city get, gets the landlords off the, off the hook because it's a city's bill, then let the city collect it, okay? However, they got to go do that legally. Okay, number two, they could raise the deposit because it only affects uh, tenants anyway. And I, I couldn't tell by the ordinance what year this $180 deposit was, was, was uh, created. I know it was a lower figure, and there was a lot of arguing about what is it going to be 200 bucks or 150 or whatever. And it, 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 the only part I remember is that it, they negotiated to 180 at that time. And it, can somebody tell me what, how old that ordinance is? I can't. We can we can check it out and find okay, out. Okay, good. The reason the reason that's very important is because let's just assume it's 20 years old. Okay, I'm going to take I'm going to go out on a stretch because I don't have a I don't have a year for that yet. But look, for for assumption, let's just say it's 20 years old. I think it's fair to say that the water bills have probably tripled in the last 20 years, but the deposits not. That's where my problem is. I'll give you I'll give you a live example right now. What's happening? Okay, I got I got hit for a, for a water bill, roughly about three hundred thirty dollars. Okay, got this thing in the mail. I'm thinking, how could that possibly be? Okay, well they hadn't subtracted out the one eighty yet. Okay, and you got a family of three, and their bills it averages about one fifty a month. I, I checked with the city, got all this good information. Okay, and so it, it figures about one fifty a month. I'm thinking, well how do we go from one fifty to, to almost three fifty when it, it comes time for Ken to pay? And they said, oh, well, your, your water bill is paid in arrears, okay? After you use the water for, say, uh, October, you get a bill in November for October's thing. Makes perfect sense to me. That, you know, that's how utilities are done. Yep. All right. The, the rub is that not just, you don't get, I don't, or that bill doesn't accumulate just for that 30 days, though, because when the tenants choose not to pay, they have another, like, almost 21 more days until, until it gets shut off. So in theory, it's almost another month. And so if you take their 150 consumption times two, now we're up to 300 bucks, which is why I'm standing here today, because it's, it's not right, okay? Now, it only affects tenants because homeowners, if they, if they don't pay their bill, you tag, you tag them on taxes, I'm, I'm good. You know, they, they're they're so consigned adults. it does adults. affect them. Please? It does affect them. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree. Okay, so no. it doesn't just affect tenants, it affects anybody that uses water. It's just tenants don't get affected by the, uh, it's the landlords that have right. problems. Right, it's a third party. A third party gets affected by this, okay? <laughs> and so because of that, there has to be something done different than what's going on right now because we have an antiquated deposit amount, and I know nobody in the room here wants to hear about the correct number, uh, for that for that deposit should be but if you just took however old that go back and look at historically whatever year that that ordinance was passed and then just do by cost of living of that 2006 I mean 2006 okay all right so almost 20 years and so now the question is what the bills were then what the rate was then and how how antiquated that deposit is because at that time it, it covered it covered this this two month gap that we're talking about. Where now it doesn't come close. Yeah. And so, this, my second proposal is to have the, the, the deposits raised to something that's that's equal to what it would be at a 180 in 2006. You know, mathematically, that's 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 simple math. Probably looking about 250. I would yeah. Say. Oh, well, I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd say close to 300 bucks. Yeah. And nobody wants to hear that. They'll be crying in the streets, and we're mean tenant, we're mean landlords, and all this. You know, I, I'm not, I don't want to pay your bills. I, I just don't. Okay. Then the third choice, which I like the best, is almost everybody around us has private water. Okay. If you're familiar with Aqua Corporation, Marion. they're in they're in eight states. Yeah. They're they're a big dog, and I've got I've spent I spent time on the phone. 
excuse me, just today with, with Aqua. I spent time with uh, PUCO to get more information as far as who, who has what kind of water, you know, it's city water, or who does it, and we're, we're probably one of the uh, uh, most, most antiquated systems around. Now, and I'll just, I'll come out and tell you why, why we still do it that way, because part of our water might get spent on everything else in the, under, under, in the city, and so that's, that's why there's always been this uh, feet dragging not to, not to get the no, thing cleaned up. No, no. And that's, no. that's not how that works. That's not how it works. The water bill can only be paid at the water, with the water. Okay. Not, it can't be paid nothing else. That's, that. that's, that's, a, that's not what people that have been in your seats have told me before. No, that's, mm -hmm. you can ask the auditor that. No, that's, right? all that's, that, that's, that's all. That's all. We can, we can, we can, we can solve that. I don't want, we don't well, want to argue about that right now. No, okay. That, that's all. I think. Uh, it's, it's very, that's very historical and very black and white. What, so we can get that resolved. What's the status on the one in the state? I'd have to look. I don't know. Really, is there any use us doing anything right now if the state is going to change something? Then we can change it at that time to coincide with what they're doing. I'm sure this is what this in this ordinance was done with, is when the state had changes last time that they did it. I, I couldn't say. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't want to wait for what the state's doing. And I'll give you a little, his, a little history lesson on that, too. Legislation was, was introduced two years ago, and then because that uh, that body is in is in there for two years. Then, if they don't get that ran through both sides, then it falls off the table, and you start all over again. There's no oh, just just like here. If it's if we're pushing November and you guys have something pending, it rolls over into the first year. Yeah. It doesn't do that down there. Okay. And so every two years, it's it's a it's a new grind, new new people, new everything. So I'm I'm not interested in that. I'm just interested in getting fixed. I'm not trying to be difficult. You, I'm just trying to be fair. Have you gone and talked to the administration on it? I think it's more their problem than ours right now. because We cannot do nothing about it. We have to follow what the ordinance says right here. What, what does it take to change an ordinance? It takes us to do that, but that's, we, that's we why, has to, that's somebody why. has to present it to us, though, to be able to change it. We just can't change it on will and nilly. There has to be a reason for it. I, I, I'm here to start the process. Whatever okay. you, you tell me what we need to do, well, and I'll be more glad to provide that. would be that. up to him. Now it's up to him. Okay. Now we yeah. work. We work. Here, here's as a, as a layman. You just mentioned. First of all, I'm a consul. Okay, in yeah. committee. I was consul yesterday. They sent me here. Okay. And then then you're suggesting I talk to the administration, which they came and decide what day of the week it is because it's not their job. Okay. Uh -huh. And then when that didn't work, then we're sent over here. Okay. I think it's more you of see, a law director you, you, issue you, than you, us you, even you, at this point. Look at look at look at from my point of view. I've got three answers in, in, in two I know, minutes. I understand. I understand. Okay, but I just want you, I want to make sure you know when to, so when things happen, you, you'll know why. What about you? What are you saying? Well, I think that it's yes. So that's absolutely your position. Is we have these options. We could raise the um, deposit. Yes, sir. We could do away with taxing the bill back on your property tax. Yes, sir. Um, I mean, you would love those. And from a no, one more. landlord, there's one. and there's one more. From a landlord standpoint, those are great, great ideas. And if I was a landlord, I would probably be on board with those. But the city also is responsible for watching their budgets and, and, and ensuring that we're running in an economical fashion, and you have the opportunity as a landlord to raise your own deposits. You have the opportunity as a landlord, uh, when you evict these people, to get a second cause, a judgment against your tenants. So you're not without a remedy. Is your this a easiest remedy is to come after the city and make us fix it because it's just taxpaying dollars and we don't have to worry about those because they'll just keep coming in. Okay. I understand that, and I understand that we have differences of opinions on those types of issues. But that would be something that before council would do anything, I would advise them to bring in the water department and bring in the people that actually run the utility department to explain what our policies are and what our procedures are. Because the other thing is, uh, your, your complaint is a unique one. I don't see a significant amount of landowners or um, landlords saying, somehow I got double taxed on this, this bill. I, I, you're the first person that's ever presented that issue. You just said last night that you've talked to landlords in the past about water. No, landlords yeah. do not want the water bills taxed right. to them. But I've never heard this double, double tax. Double tax. When you're saying that by the time that you get them out, the, the city has 
incurred one hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars. That's just that's just factual. I know that's what you're saying. You, you go right now, Sarah, and, and you'll you'll see hard copies of it. If you, I have a copy of the bill, but you you can't read it. It makes absolutely no sense. So I would encourage you to not waste your time with with this, with the stuff they print, and go have have it come to Jesus, and let's let's get this worked out. I'm I'm all, I'm all about working with the city to get this fixed. Okay, this is not going to get resolved tonight. I get that. And then another another fun fact. I understand that. Two thirds of council will not be here in 60 days. Okay, so I'm just trying to get the ball started. Mm -hmm. I want to find out what we need to do, who needs to do it, and where. I got one, one more comment about what you said about the second cause. I understand the second cause process, and, and, and I do collect. Okay, but you're putting the burden of that on me. Well, if these people are so collectible, then why doesn't the city hire hire a, a agency? To go after them themselves. Once again, I'm not I'm not an agent for the city. That's going that's going to be a burning problem. Okay. And then we're also not addressing the the, the, pri the privateering the pri privatization of, of the water, which almost every every community around it does that. You know why? Because it probably works. There's no trucks. There's no employees. There's no water. There's nobody complaining to the city about you know the the the, the water water bills or all this because it's private, just like gas or just like electric and cable okay. and things like that. Okay. You know, for for some reason, the, I just want to know why the city is so burning has a burning desire to have the water, and that's going to be the crux of the problem here because that's why. I, I get we get all this resistance for the last 25 years to try to get this thing corrected. Well, if it goes privatized, uh, the city loses control of the water. Period. Okay. So, how does Mansfield get by? How's Mansfield? Mansfield's get? not. Mansfield's they get they get their city water. They're, they're not they're, on aqua. Yeah, no, they don't. Okay. Uh, but that's what that's Marion what, does, but I don't think Mansfield does. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we 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 looked. We looked. So no. and uh, okay. So. Let's just say that was a mistake that I read. Unless okay. they just changed in the last year. I know before they won. Have you looked at the rates of that water? Yeah. I don't care about rates. I, I, what am I paying right now? I'm paying for somebody else's water. And, it, and, you, and you can't, you can't because you don't know what the rates are either. You know, that's always, that's always a concern when we go no. private on anything. Oh, what well, the rates are going to go up. Well, no, I who says that? Okay, it did go up. I we're we're not going to settle it tonight, okay. so I'm, I'm glad you, I, I thank I, you for bringing it to our attention. We'll I, try I to get something done. Next step is. Before What's I get that? out, What's I want to know what the next step I need to do to to move this thing forward. This is not going to sit and get and die. Well, I think okay. that we need to uh, uh, talk to the water department as a council and okay. see what they have to say. All right, uh, and so we can do that. When when will we when will we meet next? When you've had time to talk to the water department? We won't know that until we know what the. Water yeah. department's schedule yeah. is if yeah. they can't come into the yeah. next meeting to talk to us, yeah. we have to find out when we're going to talk. Are you guys going to talk to them here at, yeah. this, at this meeting? Not tonight, definitely not. No, no, but yes, at a committee meeting. No, we talk them. I think we talk to them separately. Uh, we'll do it. Uh, let, let's set a uh, date for a uh, month from now. Second meeting, committee meeting in December. See where we're at. Okay, and what's what's the goal of that meeting? So we're well, the goal of that meeting is to give you an answer to what we're going to do. At this point, there's nothing on council we can do except change the ordinance, and we're and at this we're not going to do that overnight. That's going to take I, that's going to take I, a long I'm not, time. I'm not asking that, sir. So, not asking that. So that's going to be something that they'll have to work on, and we're not going to do it without the new council members knowing what's going on too, and the new mayor. So. Uh, Okay, how's that, gonna affect, how's that going to affect our 30 days from now? It's not. It won't? No. Okay. Because it's going to take in the January or February get an ordinance changed. Oh, I, I understand yeah. that. So, so you might be, at this point, best to wait till the new council comes on. No, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready well, to start. Maybe we're not. Okay, you, you tell me, and I'll, I'll oh. see if that, that satisfies me. Oh, what, you tell me when we're going to talk next. Okay. I want to. We've got to move the meeting yep. along. Yeah, we, are, yep. we will move. And we're done. We're done. Okay. When are we going to meet? And he just we just said it a month from now. Meeting in December. I'll let you know. Okay. We'll put it on the agenda. If it, I'll be here. Thank we'll you. We'll put it on the agenda. If it's on the agenda, we'll discuss it. If it's not, we won't. Okay. Anybody else? If not, me or Jerry. I'm sorry. Okay. This is on the same. 
topic as she was on. But uh, I've got... Can you give your name? Uh, oh, my name is Robert Irwin, 410 Mater Drive, Besaris. Uh, I got notes back 2015 when we talked about this very same thing. And I was in here maybe six months ago. He was here and he was here. And Mr. Potter came down. This was at a, at a council meeting. And he came down and put his hand on my shoulder and said, Mr. Irwin, I will guarantee you we will not let this drop. But I don't know if it got dropped or if it's still ongoing. But uh, what really needs to be done, I feel, and going along with what Mr. Long said, is that a new set of rules need to be written for the water department. And I know you can't do that, but you yeah. can suggest this. Uh, one thing is the deposit, for sure. The billing period from the time they read till they bill is way too long. Uh, the water bills end up getting into the third month, which is another minimum charge. Uh, when they when they separate out the sewer, the water, stormwater, utility, all those, they pay a higher percentage of the deposit to the water. Uh, I don't know where that rule ever would have come from. Uh, stormwater utility was decided to put that as water. So going back to what Mr. Long said again is that not only has the water bill doubled, but you stuck uh, two different stormwater utilities onto that. So that just makes, makes the uh, water bill much higher. They, uh, the city, because of this law that the state has, the city takes advantage of that. Because uh, if someone doesn't pay their water bill, and they pass it on to the landlord, they will, the next day, turn water on for that same person. That that's, can't be right. And that does happen. I mean, and they'll, they'll tell me even where the person moved to and they got water. And also, if someone signs for the deposit, but they're not the one receiving the water, the city won't go after that person even though they know exactly where they live, like one block away from City Hall, possibly, which happened to me. So the whole set of rules needs to be changed and followed. They do accept partial payment. They say they don't, but they do. I've had tenants tell me they do. I've had tenants go down and pay 20 bucks and leave her water on. So there's a lot of rules out there that the water department had, but they don't follow. And so I think that needs to be updated. Um, so I don't know how you go about doing that. Can you guys suggest that? Or how, when you talk to the water department? Can we can find out. Yeah, yeah, I can talk, find out what the rules are now. And, and, that, and, and it would be good to have six, yeah. five, six minutes. Yeah. Okay. Oh. All right. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Damn. Okay, first, we're going to London. Uh, a part of that is we have a deposit for water, but we don't have a deposit for sewer. And it was talked about a number of times where we should go ahead and actually have a separate deposit for actually sewer as well. And that way, it could be combined. It has to be paid by the tenant, but it would also help these extra additional costs that they're incurring. Uh, and then that, that deposit also takes care of that stormwater yeah. and that additional $12.72 that's put on that bill as well. So uh, just uh, food for thought. Okay. Thanks, Bruce. OK, anybody else? Actually, just so you guys know, my kids have an apartment in Columbus. They each pay $1,200 a month. Okay, in that, in their, their stuff, they sign their lease, they have a deposit. This much of the deposit is your deposit, this is your deposit for your water and sewer because it's in the landlord's name. This much of your rent is your water. It never even becomes an issue because the second 
they stop paying what they're supposed to be paying, they could be evicted. It all becomes a part of that. The landlord has the deposit. The landlord's getting that money as part of their rent. The land, you know, they never have to worry about not knowing what's going on at the water department because the landlord knows he's in charge of it, he's got it, or his company. You're looking at these huge rental fees down in big cities, and then you look at these places here that I couldn't believe how high the rent had tripled and, and quadrupled in the last four years. But none of that's water. Like water. None of it's water. Yeah. So, I mean, why wouldn't you just put it in your, I mean, if that's such an issue, I don't understand why you wouldn't look at what other people are doing to get their money. It's just, it's phenomenal that we can go through this. And yes, do we need to probably update this? Yes, but at the same time, there's other ways to do it. There's things that you could be doing on your own so that you don't have to worry about it. Yep. Okay. Anything else? We'll adjourn at 631. Thank you. Health and Safety Committee, November 9th, 2023. Let's call Health and Safety to order at 637. 631. Or 631, I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, members present, Dan Wireball, Mark McKeever, myself, acting chair, Kevin Myers is absent today. I'd like to start off with public participation for Health and Safety. <coughs> Seeing none, I need uh, an approval of the minutes for October 19th, 2023. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. McKeever, second Mr. Wireball. It's unanimous. Um, anything on open projects you want to discuss tonight? I open it for public participation again. Seeing none, I will adjourn at 6.30. Two. Due to a lack of quorum, there will not be a public lands and buildings meeting tonight. We are moving forward with the planning committee, October, November 9th, 2023. I'll call planning to order at 6.34 p.m. Members present, Dan Wireball, Terry Spiegel, and myself, Chair. Kevin Myers is absent. Is there any public participation for platting? Okay, none coming. Uh, I need the approval of the October 19th minutes. So moved. I'll second. Okay, got a first from Terry, second from Dan. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion passed unanimous. Uh, any open projects that you'd like to discuss? Okay, none being. Back open to public participation. I, with that, I will adjourn at 6.35 p.m. Development Committee, November 9th, 2023. I will call Economic Development to order at 6.36 p.m. Members present, see Aaron Sherrick, Steve Young, and myself as acting chair. Brenton Potter is absent. Any public participation for economic development? Okay, no one. I need approval of the minutes for October 19th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from October 19th, 2023. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Okay, I have a first from C. Aaron Sherrick. Second from Steve Young. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed unanimous. Any open projects? All right. Public participation. None being, I will adjourn at 6.37 p.m. Finance Committee, November 9th, 2023. I will call Finance Committee to order at 637. Uh, members present, Mark McKeever, Terry Spiegel, myself, Chair, Kevin Myers is absent tonight. Uh, any public participation for the Finance Committee? 
Not seeing any, uh, I'll ask uh, for a motion to approve the minutes from October 19th, 2023, the regular finance committee meeting. I'll make a motion. Second. First by Mark, second by Terry. All in favor, aye. And also, I need approval of minutes from October 30th, 2023, special finance committee meeting. I'll make a motion. Second. First by Terry, second by Mark. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, okay, now we're moving on to the approval of legal notices. So that's our, we, use the, we do that every year, right? <coughs> Actually, no, this is oh. appropriating money because we ran out of money for the legal notices. Oh, um, this is, okay, this is just. Yeah, appropriations. Do you want me to just okay. do both at the same time right now? Okay. So yeah. first we want to do appropriations for the, we'll do council legal advertisements. We've had a lot this year and we ran out of money in that line. It was one of the lines that the previous auditor cut last year. So we need 2,000 more dollars in general fund under general government in the Department of Council and under contractual services. We also would like to appropriate um, for the fire department into the general fund for pensions, general fund program, security of persons and property under the fire department and then under transfers, $106,000. Yes. Okay, I'll need a motion for those. If somebody... I'll make a motion. We do the uh, appropriations and refer to council, to legislation, and make as an emergency. I'll second as an emergency. Second. Okay. Motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So we will we'll pass both those. Uh, then we'll move on to open projects. Anyone have any open projects? I actually wanted to speak oh. on um, yeah. the repealing of the amendment yesterday. I checked with uh, Miranda and it's still on there, just so everybody's on the same page. Um, when I had initially started it, I, it was a period in time where I didn't want to bother the previous auditor for personal reasons. And um, I had looked through the legislation to try to find a copy to go off of, and I could not find it. I reached out to the law clerk. She could not find it either. So at that point in time, I did my best. There were issues with it. So we pulled it, and I spoke to the auditor. She came into the office, the previous auditor. She came into the office today, and she said, I was under the impression that any time you move money from one fund to another fund, it had to be brought to council. She said that as long as it is in the transfers line and it is specifically for that reason, it did not need to be brought to council. And that is why I could not find previous legislation for it. So we only, that piece of legislation only need repeal. It did not, it does not need replaced. So it did not need to be an emergency. I did not know that at that time last night. So I apologize for that. Okay, well, thanks for that update. Thank you. So we're back to open projects. Do you guys have any? No. I've got, I, I just got one, and I know it's, everybody doesn't like it, but it's repealing the tax credit. Uh, I don't know. We got, we're, you know, we're going to do it or, or we're going to leave it. So I'm just, my, my only problem is leaving it for the next people. If they want to take it back off, they can, but I guess, uh, so where are you guys at with that? And does the new incoming administration have any thoughts on that now that the election's over? <laughs> well, so you're gonna, you're gonna repeal the tax credit that you promised people that if they pass the income tax level. <coughs> there's no money. What, that's fine, and then, but okay. here's the thing, when we leave, and everybody says, that council left us broke. So if we don't want to do it, that's fine. Then we left, we left it in the next council and how, the next administration's hands. So. How, how are we on the budget? So from what I understand, the, some things are all happening at once and there's not a, anything set in stone yet, but the police department is negotiating raises with administration. I think we're all aware of that. 
tentatively budgeting what I'm thinking will be in there. We have used all the safety forces levy money and I had to push about $100,000 in salaries into the general fund. So we've already maxed out what our projections are for the safety forces levy. Uh, whether, if you want to address it with a, you know, getting rid of the tax credit or however you want to address it's up to you. That's just an update on where I'm currently sitting during budgeting. What is your tentative forecast for next year at the rate we're going now? And I, and I can't, I'm not at, I can't hold you to it because it, it's an educated guess because you don't yeah. have all the facts, but as you're seeing it currently. Well, currently it's not looking great, but we also don't know, we're not going to see the out of town workers, this credit that, or sorry, what we already reduced their tax credit to, we're not going to see that for another year or so anyway. So I can't give you any certain numbers on the amount of money we'll see coming in from that. But if we're relying just on the safety forces levy, which, I, which is the only thing I have in front of me at all to go on right now, it's not looking wonderful. We tentatively could go into the red come end of the first quarter. I haven't finished budgeting the general fund yet, so I, I don't have really good, I'm going to come in tomorrow when everybody else is enjoying their holiday <laughs> and try to work on that, so. Okay. I'm only bringing it up because it is, it is a way to keep us out of the red. If we don't want to do it, we don't have to do it. It's entirely up to you guys. <laughs> Greg Y11, Go right 25. Ahead. I understand your viewpoint, Dan, very much. Uh, six months, eight months ago, I came to council, okay? I came to committee meetings and told you guys this income tax, and it's on record, it's on tape. Came to you guys and said, there wasn't enough money on the income tax to cover both police and fire. Very, a lot of people know that, okay? I told you the best option, an option to look at, and you guys refused to look at those two options, was to put on a separate police and a separate fire department, property tax levy with no exceptions, no deductions off that. Everybody pays the same property tax. That way the voters could vote on it decide and then the income tax could have went away and then you wouldn't have to worry about the out-of-town tax credits but nobody in this council yes, ever did. listened or even I did. but i mean ever <laughs> put any forth effort into actually looking at that option before you guys went to the income tax you had plenty of time okay you had plenty of time that was back in june before you had to put something on the ballot and by August. But you guys, this council and this administration failed to actually throw some people together and look at that option. Now you're in the situation that you're in, okay? She's right. You're not going to see, if you repeal the income tax on out of town workers, you're going to not see that for almost six months to a year now because everything is six months to a year behind. Okay, so you're not going to see no money. So, so you should do it. My thing is, I don't think you should do it. I think you need to look at options. You're already probably, and I'm almost guesstimating by her verbiage and her language and her mannerisms, that the city is already in the red. Point blank. I bet you by the 18th of this month, she will know for probably for a fact that the city will be in the red on the police and fire. No doubt about it. Okay. I think council, even this council right now, and with the new members coming on, you need to sit down right now and look at a viable option for police and fire. You get them their own levies. They stick within their own budgets. That's the money they got. And if the money's not there, okay, in their budgets, guess what? You can't have it. 
you and I, you own a business, I, I do my budgeting like everybody else does. If you don't have the money, you don't get it. Okay? Because the city can't go out and borrow a whole bunch of money, can they? Okay? So you have to look at viable options. Okay? So you're stating you think we should put it as property tax. Is that what you're saying? I said that back in June. And Bart I brought that up as a property mm -hmm. tax. And it was brought up and you didn't believe how much pushback we got on property tax. But so I, I, I'm going to argue back with you on that because I brought that up about property tax but the and it is, wasn't going to work. But the thing is, nobody wanted to put any effort into even looking at it. And I did actually look at sell, it. And actually sell it. Who had the numbers? Where's the numbers? I had the numbers from the auditor, we county auditor, on property value and everything and how much it would generate at different levels. And I can bring it to you the next next week. That's fine. I'll be here. But I'm saying I had all that information and I presented it to council. And nobody wanted it and it would brought and the public did not want it did no. not want to hear a thing about it. But now we're in this situation. Here we are. So now you want to go back after the ta income tax people out of towners that you're not even going to see. So it's not even going to affect what you're dealing with now. All I'm doing is trying to leave Thank the you. next council with yep with some options to to uh, have income I think we need to look at so well I mean this is my last this is my last effort at it I, I won't bring it up again but uh, I just wanted to bring it up one last time and so you know so what what will end up happening and I'm not threatening or saying anything and Bruce you you'll have to deal with this is that uh, when when we get down too low we have to start laying people off yep. and then we're going to end up paying and then we're in a vicious circle because we have to pay most of that unemployment so we're going to lay them off and we're still not we're still just spiraling towards fiscal emergency. emergency so we'll uh i guess we'll deal with that next year any more open uh, well, any more open projects or public participation yeah come on up why not <laughs> I just want to get an update on the pool um, I was I was at uh, I think the console meeting probably April or May when it was put out that the pool wasn't going to be open because of lack of funds wait a minute the pool was told in November, the public was notified. Dan brought it up, I know, three times at council saying, the pool is not opening. He said it in <laughs> December, in January, and nobody listened until March came and then everybody got panicky. <laughs> we said it in our meetings at finance on the annual budget. We said, we have to cut it. We had to cut $400,000. Pool was a hundred thousand. It was off. So I don't want to hear anything about the pool. <laughs> it's going to be the same way again it's if we don't have the money. The pool is a luxury, and it was by the grace of the city school district. They had money that they could apply to that. You, you and I are on the same team. I, I'm aware of everything you just said. I'm, I'm just here this year early in November. So if there's any way we can make this happen without the city of Bussars, uh, I'm sorry, city school district, you know, bailing out the city, I just want to know what the plan is. Well, I'll know, I guess I'll know Monday, because uh, I Tuesday. guess we're, or Tuesday. is it Tuesday? Yeah, we're doing budgets. When is it? I thought it was the 13th. Uh, and 14th. I believe it was huh? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because a meeting, oh, there's yeah. another meeting oh. in here. Oh. Okay, I probably haven't seen my email. Anyway, I'll know next week, because we're, that's, that's the first we're going to see okay. the budget. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So there's some other things that will probably be cut too. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. when when will that be? I guess. I mean, it's a four fifteen no. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday here in council chambers. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. As far as as far as the the um, end result, 
the for budget public, will have to be the budget will have to be approved before the end of the year, end of the year. Uh, and I can remember at times we've been in here on the 27th and <laughs> approving the budget so so we just hash it between uh, between us the administration and okay. and we'll work work through it so all right, thank you all right yep that's it that's it oh you just made it all right last no, one I had to run up the stairs to get up here so let me catch my breath kurt fankhauser 616 prospect i was watching mr white and he brought him i'm still out of breath <laughs> He, he brought up the property tax. Now, the past council, or the current council president has talked about that we, we need to seriously think about how to get revenue for the police and fire instead of kicking the can down the road. That's what kicking the can down the road is referring to. It's referring to property tax. There's currently n nothing hardly on our taxes for property for police and fire. Even though police and fire is protecting property. <clears throat> now, the reason it's never put on the ballot is because who pays property taxes? mostly in Bucyrus. The older generation that owns property, they also don't generally pay income tax. They also are the ones that vote. So what happens is anytime the city needs revenue, they think, what's our best chances at getting a tax passed? Well, let's just Let's just tax the income because, you know, we, we know like the voting base for the, the older generation, they're the ones that's going to pass or fail something on the ballot because they, they vote religiously. That's why it's never brought up. That's why it's never looked into and it never, it always gets like Jenny refers to, kicking the can down the road, okay? You, manufacturing's continually declining. That's where your major income tax is generated from. You know, General Electric, they ship the LED light bulbs out to China or wherever they're making them now. Now, I, I know this isn't a popular, this isn't gonna be popular to bring this up, but the property tax is the only tax that actually over time will go up as far as your, your property is going to be continually reassessed to the, the value of it. It has potential to generate more revenue for the city 10 years from now, 20 years from now whatever versus the income tax which most likely is going down 10 years or 20 years from now due to loss of manufacturing jobs so what i'm saying here is you know how many times have we went back to the income tax you know the last three or so plus times to generate revenue you're you're, you're going after one group of people this thing needs to be fair. If, if, if the, the people that own property in this town want to continue to have police and fire services that are at recommended staffing levels, they need to put some skin in the game here. I brought it up. I, I'm just saying. Mark it. brought it up. We asked about it. Nobody wanted to go you along can, with You them. can actually own property in this town if you don't live in the town and you can receive police and fire protection for that property and not be paying anything well so can people that work out we've got, a, we've got 100 over 100 residents that do what that is, right now i'm going to use the general electric <laughs> property 
if that property goes completely dormant and vacant, yeah, okay, you might have five jobs out there in a warehouse. You have a massive property that is owned by some far out of state people that that property is receiving police and fire protection and you can't tell me that five people on a payroll out there is going to generate what it should cost to provide police and fire for that property. It's, it's not going to. The townships, they tax property for fire. I'm sure if you checked in some of the surrounding cities and other counties, they do too. I, I, I would almost venture to say that Bucyrus is probably the most undertaxed city for property taxes as far as a police or fire levy being on the property taxes. You're preaching to the choir. I don't I, know. Uh, I, I brought it up. And, it, and it, it, this is what's <laughs> going to happen. This is what's going to happen. If it gets brought up or if it gets referred to council or something, it's not going to go anywhere because the the people that are going to vote on it will be like, oh, I, I just, I don't, I don't know if I, I want to have a vote on that. And then, you know, the, the people that vote for my reelection could say that, oh, you, you raised our property taxes. Somebody needs to explain to those people that you're essentially receiving free services. Well, Kurt, you'll have two years to do that. Yes. At least. Uh, I don't want to be, I don't want to have to be the one to do it. I, I want you to do it. <laughs> right, right I threw, up, I threw up my last <laughs> offer. This was my last <laughs> offer and it was shot down. So. It's actually the best time to do it because the primary's in uh, March. So you guys, you time. guys will have, you guys can figure it out, I guess. But I've tried. So with that, I'm going to adjourn at 7 p.m.